Here's Brody Brazil. So I'm doing this video on microphone technique, and I realize a lot of you are already saying, what even is that? Or for those of you who do know, you're wondering, why would you actually care to know what I'm about to share? And that is because here in 2020, I mean, so many of you are actually using a microphone to record things and capture things on a daily basis, whether it's a Zoom video conference or just FaceTiming your friends, or if you're creating other videos and content because you can't see people in person. So many more people right now are putting themselves on camera and because of that, using microphones than ever before. And so I wanted to share some techniques about how to properly use a microphone. These are things I've learned over time as a broadcaster. And I will say this, as much as everybody is concerned with how things look all the time and and how it visually appears on camera. There's a saying that, what is it, 51% of how something looks is how it sounds. And I, I firmly believe that. There is so much to go into audio quality that actually matters when you're watching a video. And you typically don't realize something is wrong unless it's really wrong. And I want to help you um, have that not be the case. So A couple different things I want to get into here as I discuss microphone technique. The first being this. The microphone is like a tool and specifically it's like a golf club, right? Because on a couple different levels, I could hand a golf club to somebody like me and I'd be terrible with it. Would kind of know what to do with it, but my swing is awful and I don't use it the right way. But I'd hand it to one of my friends who plays golf a bunch and they'd know exactly what to do with it. So Part of it is, yes, the the user slash tool interface, having the right person to know how to use the the thing is certainly going to help you get the most out of it. But then there's also this. um, Let's say you're on the green and uh, you're about to make your putt. You wouldn't want to pull the driver out of your bag right, to putt that ball. You want to use the putter. Vice versa, you wouldn't want to use the putter to hit a ball off a tee. So Selecting the right equipment, knowing what to use under the right circumstances is also very helpful. I think those are are broad, broad ways to look at this, but they are so important. Again, it's knowing how to use what you have and also knowing how to select the right microphone for what you're trying to accomplish. Couple of the tips I want to just get straight into here. And, And the first is obvious, the distance you are away from your microphone. And this is going to vary based on what type of microphone it is. If it's a a dynamic microphone, you're going to have to probably be a little bit closer to it. Those don't pick up as many of the room sounds as, say, a condenser like this will. A condenser with like this and with compression like I have, I can be a little farther away and it's still going to do okay. So knowing the microphone that you're using, is it a dynamic? Is it a condenser? Is it a shotgun mic? All of those have different abilities to pick up. And they also usually have different pickup patterns. Is it a circular pattern, which goes pretty much all the way around the mic? You might want that for, for various different reasons. Is it, a, is it a figure eight, which picks up in front of and behind the microphone? Um, is it a cardioid like this one is, where it kind of has a little heart shape right in front? So everything in front here is going to pick up pretty equally, but it really kind of won't pick up here on the side if I talk into it like that. Um, or is it, a, is it a super or a hyper cardioid where that pickup pattern is really tight right in front of the microphone? You, you want to know where your microphone is actually expecting to hear you. And you also have to think about the, the way you address the microphone. This is a side address microphone, meaning that um, the way it stands up like this, it's going to hear me uh, from the side. If I talk into it from the top, it's not going to sound good at all. Um, and there's a lot of different misconceptions with certain microphones. They may look like side address when they're actually in address, or they may look like in address uh, when they're actually side address. So, so make sure you know where exactly to talk into this microphone and what kind it is and the pattern that it is. Um, and then there's also lavalier mics and headset mics. Those aren't as big of a concern here as I discuss this because a lavalier mic typically clips onto you, and, and so long as you clip it onto a reasonable spot, you know, right around your your collar here, and you don't move and, and you don't brush up against it, it's not going to have too many problems. Uh, and the same thing with a headset mic. Once you place it properly and at the right distance, it's going to move with you as you move around. So you, you shouldn't have a bunch of problems with that versus like a fixed microphone here. And you're going to get a lot of people who, as they start talking, they might sway off the microphone and you can already see, yeah, I mean, it's just, it doesn't work. If I sway off, I start talking this way. It just, yeah, it does not work. 
So think about your, your distance uh, from the microphone and your presence to the microphone. You have to find that sweet spot. I can't tell you exactly where it is because every microphone, every situation is different, but you have to listen. I'll get into monitoring in just a second. Know your position, know your distance to the microphone. As part of that, and as part of uh, even a headset mic, which a lot of times this happens with, you can create plosives. And the, the old saying, if you really want to test out plosives, is by saying, please, ba- pl- please bring pizza pronto. Did you notice what I did there? There was a lot of P's. Because typically when you, when you say a P, put your hand here, P. You feel that air? P. There's a lot of air that comes out of your mouth And if that air hits the capsule of like this condenser microphone, I really don't want to pop it, but I just did. Um, So popping your peas on a microphone is generally deemed bad practice. It's not uh, it's not favorable to the listener. And if you do that over and over again, typical listeners not exactly going to know what's happening or or why it's happening. They're just going to know they don't like the way that the peas keep happening. The pop, pop, pop. Um, they are going to notice it as a, as a negative. So to avoid plosives, and especially on a condenser mic, my trick is this. You're noticing that this microphone right now, I'm talking directly dead into it. And I'm also speaking with a little bit of a technique where I'm not blowing as much air out of my mouth as I talk. But at first, if you're really trying to get a grasp of a condenser, you can keep it from this seam close distance, but angle it at angle it at a 45 uh, degree mark so that your so that the the axis of the microphone is going this way and I'm talking right across it. Now, some people will tell you that that will negatively affect the frequency the frequency response and the acoustics of the microphone. It might, um, but only to a very small extent, especially from this distance right here. Again, I'm not talking about being this far away from the microphone. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying get in your normal spot and and work the microphone as you normally would. Just don't do it directly on. And that way, all the the air that I might blow out of my mouth while talking will not hit the capsule of the microphone. And again, you should get some, some pretty decent sound out of that. So plosives are something to consider. Um, the other one is just flat out proximity effect. Now, we're talking about the tone of your voice and the sound of the microphone and, and what it picks up. I mean, you've heard everybody um, talking to a microphone way, like way too close. Like I am right now, and I have compression here, so it's adjusting the levels. But this is, I don't know that you like this. Or, or at least there's a technique I could use like this if I, want my, if I want my voice to sound a certain way, I would do that. But in reality, you know, nobody, nobody should be talking like that. Some people do. Typically, when you get that close to a microphone, you are going to change the way it sounds. You're going to increase the, the low end of the frequency response, the, the bass, the bassy side. It's not going to be as clear. It's going to sound muffled. If I get up this close, typically on a, on a, on a lot lesser mic, this is going to sound muffled, right? So I, I don't necessarily want that. That goes to the, again, the distance that you are away from the microphone. Just know that proximity effect is real and you can use it to your advantage. You can use it for effect sometimes, but you generally don't want to be as much as you don't want to be too far away. You also don't want to be right up on the microphone for reasons of it sounding differently and also reasons of the plosives like we discussed previously. Now, how do you know that what you're doing is actually working correctly? I mean, it is so beneficial to monitor your sound. Now, a lot of people who are are voiceover professionals and experts in this field, a lot of times they'll track things, they'll, they'll speak into the mic and they'll do stuff with their headphones off. They just like to hear their natural voice and that's fine. But if you're new at this and if you're also trying to figure things out in real time, you're definitely going to want to monitor what you're doing either in real time or after the fact. You have to stop and listen. How is this sounding right now? If I'm if I'm farther back here, should I not be this far away? Should I be should I be this close or is this right here my sweet spot? What you want to do is identify your sweet spot. Eventually, yeah, you can go without headphones once you found it um, if you feel comfortable, but a lot of times in determining how you sound and the mix of everything else, you're being your own audio engineer and this is the only way to really figure it out. Um, of of how you're using the microphone properly. So monitoring is important. What else do I want to discuss here? Oh, compression. Two more things. Compression. Now you saw my screen uh, and it actually just went dark because I didn't touch it in a while. (laughs) But um, 
Compression is something I'm using here on the signal chain to multiple layers, and compression is a, a high-level effect that's essentially going to raise the lowest parts of, of my volume and going to squash down the highest parts so that, right, so that I can kind of get in here and talk at a very, you know, quiet voice. I mean, you know, quite honestly, you're having a hard time realizing now that I am talking quiet because compression is doing its job. It's bringing this up to a certain level. But also then if I yell two seconds later, see, there was a difference. You heard the difference, but it wasn't that much. Compression basically takes away the contrast from the, the quietest to the loudest sound you'll make. And that's important for a couple different reasons. If you're doing a lot of talking into a microphone, uh, you may get fatigued. And you may, you may be talking so loud for so long that it, it hurts your throat, hurts your voice. This allows you to talk at a much quieter level and have everything be even across the board. Uh, and again, you know, you talk about setting up your microphone, figuring out the right volume. That's all part of it too. I guess I didn't discuss the technical side, but setting your gain, setting your input levels, those are important. And those are important to match with how far away you are from the microphone. Compression kind of adds an extra layer of, of security just in terms of, of making sure you don't clip it at the very high side and also making sure that you get an adequate signal level to begin with that it's not ever too low, right? If, if you have a soft talker, if you have a soft talker that comes in and, and decides to talk at this volume right here, this is how loud some people talk. Well, it's fine on this microphone. It picked it up um, without a problem. And then the last thing to consider about microphone technique, it really has nothing to do with how you actually use the mic, but it's, it's where you place the microphone. Uh, if you have the choice, pick a room that is acoustically friendly. Uh, for example, here in the home studio, and you, you can kind of see it, uh, this camera, the GoPro, it doesn't get it as well, but there are panels up on the wall. There's one also right in front of me here to the left. And, and what these are meant to do is deaden the sound in this room so that my voice doesn't bounce off one wall to another to another and you don't get all that reverberation. So part of microphone technique is not just how you interact with the mic, but but where you and uh, where you place yourself and where you place the microphone in a room um, and how you use it. What, what situation are you using it in? Some people might take this uh, into a bathroom. I mean, this is a this is a very high-end microphone that I'm using right here, the, the Neumann U87 AI. But for example, if I took this into the bathroom of my house and recorded something, it would sound like I'm in a bathroom. Um, so pick a room that sounds like how you want it to sound. And oftentimes, uh, the best rooms in your house, if you're just recording audio, are a small closet, uh, a bedroom usually. You can, you can do a lot of things with pillows and duvets and, and covers Things that absorb sound. You want to be in a room that best absorbs sound. So hopefully all of this kind of helps you in the, in the decision-making process of how you'll use a microphone, what microphone you might buy. I, I didn't get into all the differences between condensers, dynamics, and pickup patterns and all that. I mean, there's enough information out there for you. But just in terms of working the microphone, just know, like I said, it's similar to a golf club in that you got to know, number one, how to use it, right? The right person has to be using it. It doesn't just work for you. And also the ability to select the right microphone for the job you're trying to accomplish.